The anime starts and we see a boy named Ichiban Boshi showing a mask to some samurais who wanted to kill an old man. He asks them about it, but samurais get very angry when they see the mask near Ichiban Boshi and try to kill him. He defends himself and fights back, calling himself the samurai killer. Suddenly, the samurai guards arrest him and give him the punishment of death. To do Haisuk, the captain of Team H and Sengumi, saves him and seven other people who were supposed to be beheaded that day. To do explains why he brought them there and offers them a chance to become substitutes for Shinsengumi samurais. They have only two choices, either join them or die, as they now know the secret. Out of the eight, seven agree to join the Shinsengumi. At first, Ichiban Boshi is unsure about joining the Shinsengumi because his family was killed by a samurai wearing a strange mask, and he hates samurais. But he agrees to join when Tadu tells him that the samurais with the strange masks who killed his family are from an organization called Zamanuni, and they are enemies of the Shinsengumi too. After that, Tadu makes him the leader of the substitute group, gives him a new name, Kondo Isami, which is after the previous general, and offers him his sword. Ichiban Boshi accepts the sword and joins the Shinsengumi to seek revenge for his family. Later, Matsudaira Katamori, the military commissioner of Kyoto from Izu Domain, asks Tadu about the plan for the substitutes and orders him to train them. Meanwhile, Akira, one of the substitutes, decides to teach everyone sword fighting. She chooses Kondo as her sparring partner, but it turns out, he doesn't use a sword and instead fights with kicks. Tota stops him and hits him for disrespecting the sword, as it is very important to samurais. After that, Tadu takes them to patrol the city in three groups. While patrolling, Kondo and Sakuya, also one of the substitutes, find a man wearing a strange mask who is trying to kill an innocent man. Kondo quickly kicks him from behind, pushing him forward, but the man fights back with his sword. Sakuya saves him from the attack and rushes towards the man with his sword, but the man jumps over a wall and runs away. Ichiban Boshi chases after him and sees that he's targeting another family. Recalling his dreadful past, he finally pulls his sword named Kotetsu, which starts glowing for some reason and eliminates him with a single strike. Tadu, seeing this, suspects that the previous owner of the sword might have granted him the power. He informs them about the incident that occurred on August 18th, which was the day of the government's change. The leader of the masked people killed all the Shinsengimi executives, leaving Tadu as the sole survivor. He suspects that all the souls of previous executives are somehow stored in their respective swords. Later, Tsuchimikado Haruo, the head of the Tsuchimikado family, conducts a naming ceremony where Tadu introduces the newly admitted substitutes in the Shinsengimi. Tsuchimikado notes that Ichiban Boshi's character resembles previous Kondo Isami's nature. That night, Sakuma has a dream about his childhood, where we see that his mother was a victim of domestic violence. The following morning, Tadu takes the substitutes on an escort mission for the Sakuma Shosen. While en route to the naval training center, a gang of villainous ronin attempts to attack Sakuma, but the group managed to protect him. After the fight, Sakuma recognizes Sakuya as the one who had tried to kill him. Ichiban Boshi urges Sakuma to forgive Sakuya and not judge him based on his past, as they have all made mistakes before. Upon reaching Kobe port, Sakuma shows them American-made steamships and explains that they have no desire to destroy Japan, they simply seek profit. Sakuma becomes very tired and falls asleep on the floor upon arriving at the house. Sojin requests the broken Kajinmaru Kunishige sword from Suzurindano, which was damaged during the fight, so he can create a trick weapon. Suzurin gives him the sword since it is no longer of use to him. In the middle of the night, Sakuya suddenly awakens from a dream of his past, where he killed his father who frequently abused and tortured his mother. He hears the sound of an eagle and follows it. It turns out to be a signal from Kawakami Gensai, Sakuya's former master, who inquires about the order to assassinate Sakuma and advises Sakuya to abide by the rules of a hired killer. Sakuya reveals that he was betrayed by his colleagues, and now he does not belong with them. He now assumes a new identity as Hijikata Toshizo and refuses to kill Sakuma. A fight erupts between Sakuya and Kawakami as Sakuya refuses to assassinate Sakuma. Kawakami brandishes the same sword that the masked demons possess. Meanwhile, Ichiban Boshi arrives at the scene, guided by his sword, and is shocked to discover that Sakuya killed his father. Kawakami starts attacking Ichiban Boshi, believing him to be one of Sakuya's allies. However, Sakuya swiftly stabs his sword into Kawakami's back, killing him. The next day, Tadu assigns the task to the Shinsengumi of investigating Katsura Kagoro from the Choshu domain and patrolling around his residence. Akira disguises herself as a Geiko, a female Japanese performing artist, and goes to gather information about the Choshu domain. She overhears suspicious noises coming from Yoshidaya's house and attempts to listen in. A man calling him Katsura catches her eavesdropping. Ikuchio, another performer in the room, comes to Akira's aid, claiming her as her companion. Meanwhile, Sakuya and Tadu apprehend a Choshu agent who was spying on them during their patrol. The agent confesses that he was hired to spread rumors about Katsura frequently visiting Yoshidaya. 
Tadu comprehends the situation and swiftly heads towards Yoshidaya's house. During a gathering, the man claiming to be the Katsura reveals himself as a spy and orders his fellow gangsters to attack all the performers. Akira finally reveals herself being a spy and pleads with him to spare the others who are unrelated to the situation, however, he remains skeptical, fearing the presence of someone from the Shinsengimi group. Meanwhile, Ichiban Boshi arrives at the location, guiding innocent people through a secret and narrow route. However, other members of the Shinsengimi also arrive after hearing the rumors from their sources, leading to a battle between them. Ikuchio reveals her sword and starts fighting alongside Akira. Eventually, Akira and the rest of the Shinsengimi successfully defeat the hooligans, but Ikuchio suddenly vanishes from the scene. Later, it is revealed that Ikuchio is the actual Katsura. He was hiding his identity by pretending to be Ikuchio. After the events, Tadu imposes the punishment of 1,000 sword swings as training for not following the orders. During the night, members of the masked group attempt to kill other substitutes, Jitaro and Bo, while they are asleep. However, the weapons accidentally fall on them, waking them up. The sound of the incident alerts the other members of the Shinsengimi, who rush to the Maikawa building to find them. Akira knocks down one of the spies named Makura, which frightens the others and causes them to flee. Tadu orders Akira, Sojin, and Suzurin to chase after the fleeing spies, while Ichiban Boshi, Bo, and Jitaro clean up the area, and Sakuya confronts Makura with the truth. The following morning, Tadu informs Katamori about the incidents and the circulation of swords in the city through orphan children. It is revealed that Jitaro had been distributing rice balls to the orphans, as he used to lead a group of street orphans before going to prison. Jitaro, Ichiban Boshi, and Bo visit his old brother, Tamekichi, who used to be involved in smuggling illicit goods, in search of information about the masked men. They discover the spies gathering swords from Tamekichi, who had attempted to assassinate Chitaro and Bo earlier. They capture spies and take them to their base. The spies confess to working with the masked demons, confirming Makura's earlier confession taken by Sakuya. They devise a plan to take down masked demons. Tamekichi enters a lumber hut to deliver the swords. However, instead of giving him his pay, they attack him and prepare to kill him. Fortunately, Chitaro, Bo, and Ichiban Boshi emerge from the woods and save him. Among the chaos, one of the masked men hands the bag of swords to Rashimaru, the captain of the masked demons. Ichiban Boshi assumes that he was the killer who killed his family and chases after him. However, he is astonished when he discovers that Rashimaru is his own brother, Tsukido. He launches an attack, but Sakuya intervenes and saves Ichiban Boshi. Sakuya fights against Rashimaru, but Rashimaru manages to escape with the swords. Sojin and Suzurin continue their experiments on the swords and the bodies of the influenced masked men, but so far, they have not discovered any significant findings. They visit Mokichi's house, the man they had saved after he was stabbed on the street, only to find out that he has passed away. Sojin is unable to determine the cause of death as the wound had already healed. During their return from the funeral rites, Sojin's sword points towards one of the shops named Shirakawea. They inform Tadu and the other members of the Shinsengimi about this discovery. Shirakawea is one of the prominent shops in the capital, and launching a raid without concrete evidence could create trouble for Matsudaira Katamori, who oversees the Shinsengimi. Tadu instructs Ichiban Boshi to stay at the headquarters while the others search for evidence against Shirakawea. Meanwhile, Akira meets with Katasura, who is disguised as an entertainer. Katasura reveals that they have been profiting by unjustly raising the price of kerosene. Ichiban Boshi reflects on memories from his past when his mother favored his brother, Tsukido. Sakuya urges him to kill Tsukido, stating that there is no longer any humanity left within him. Sakuya warns Ichiban Boshi that if he hesitates to kill Tsukido, he will take the task upon himself. While scouting out Shirakawea, Sojin and Suzurin are surrounded by several masked demons. They successfully defeat the masked demons and report the incident to the headquarters. Tadu orders them to proceed with the raid on Shirakawea the following night. The Shinsengimi prepare to carry out the raid on Shirakawea as they believe their enemy is operating from within the compound. However, Tadu explicitly forbids Ichiban Boshi from participating in the operation due to his emotional attachment to his brother, fearing that it might compromise the mission's success. Ichiban Boshi reminisces about his childhood memories with his brother and struggles to come to terms with Tsukido's actions. While drinking at a bar, he encounters Uchiyama Haiko Jiro, the town's magistrate, and they form a close friendship based on their shared compassion for family members. The night of the operation arrives, and the Shinsengimi assembles their forces. Tadu instructs them to capture Uchiyama, who is protecting Shirakawea from arrest. They proceed to the Shirakawea compound. The low-ranking members are tasked with searching the annex, while the captains search the main building. Sakuya discovers a hidden passage leading to the basement, which they enter. The basement reveals an unusual tunnel adorned with peculiar paintings. 
They stumble upon an unfamiliar device that appears to be a power source. However, Tsukito outmaneuvers them, trapping them in the basement and setting it ablaze. Meanwhile, Ichiban Boshi arrives at Shirakawea and begins his search for Tsukito. Tsukito hands the basement keys to Uchiyama, ordering him to kill Ichiban Boshi or face consequences such as the death of his little sister, Okeo. Tsukito urges Ichiban Boshi to kill the magistrate and save his friends. Trapped in the basement, the Shinsengimi members use a bomb to blow open the gate and escape to the outside. As the oxygen and there can intensify the flames inside. Upon emerging, they discover that Ichiban Boshi has killed Uchiyama, the magistrate. Unfortunately, their efforts prove futile as Shirakawea is consumed by fire, destroying all the evidence they are seeking. Ichiban Boshi's arrest for killing the magistrate Uchiyama leads to the disbandment of the Shinsengimi. Sakuya confronts Ichiban Boshi and urges him to kill his brother Tsukito to prevent further consequences for the Shinsengimi captains. Katamori informs Tadu that he has no choice but to punish Ichiban Boshi, giving him a three-day ultimatum to restore the Shinsengimi's honor or face disbandment. Sakuya becomes frustrated with Ichiban Boshi's reluctance to kill the captain of the masked demons or his own brother, throwing a bowl of rice in anger. Later, Sakuya shares news he received from a sword polisher regarding Maeb Tizo, an anti-shogun extremist affiliated with the Higo domain. Tadu orders the Shinsengimi to pursue Maeb and his extremist group. Meanwhile, news arrives that Ichiban Boshi has escaped from his confinement cell by using broken dish shards to dig a hole. Tadu instructs the team to focus on investigating Maeb rather than searching for Ichiban Boshi, as others can handle the task. Akira secretly consults Katasura about Maeb's connection to the masked demons and he advises the Shinsengimi to visit Masuya, the ink wholesaler. During Uchiyama's funeral, Ichiban Boshi encounters Okeo near her brother's grave and discloses the events that unfolded at Shirakawea. Okeo initially tries to kill him but is convinced to share information about Uchiyama's association with the masked men. Meanwhile, the Shinsengimi searches Masuya and discovers a significant cache of weapons and ammunition. They also capture Furutaka Shuntaro, one of Maeb's associates. Sakuya subjects the captured associate to torture to extract the truth. The associate reveals their plan to burn down the city and escort the emperor, presenting themselves as loyalist forces. At the Shinsengimi headquarters, Ichiban Boshi surrenders himself to Tadu and provides the information he obtained from Okeo. Tadu recognizes his sincerity and forgives him. Based on the information provided by Ichiban Boshi and Sakuya, Tadu divides the Shinsengimi into two groups. Sakuya, Suzurin, and Bo are tasked with searching in Omiya, Shimomurea, Atsubo, Agawadiai, and Izatsu. On the other hand, Ichiban Boshi, Akira, Jitaro, and Tadu himself search in Kayamachi Dori, Shikokuya, and Aikdaya. At Aikdaya, Ichiban Boshi arrives and seizes the weapons that were intended for setting fire to the city. They proceed upstairs and engage in a battle with the allies of the Choshu domain. Meanwhile, Sakuya kills a man in Shimomurea who was involved in the arson plot. They discover a painting with a symbol that matches a location on the map, indicating the Saimai Shrine. They rush to the shrine and apprehend a man spreading gunpowder, but unfortunately, the fire breaks out and begins to spread throughout the shrine. At Aikdaya, Tsukito attempts to kill Ichiban Boshi, and during the fight, Tadu sustains injuries while protecting Ichiban Boshi. Tsukito manages to escape just as the rest of the Shinsengimi members arrive at the scene. Tadu instructs Ichiban Boshi to lead the Shinsengimi, just as he did after the assassination of the executives within the organization. Together, they rush to the city and request assistance from the soldiers of the Azu domain to help extinguish the fire before it reaches the emperor's location. After the fire, Ichiban Boshi takes charge in leading the reconstruction efforts and provides support to the homeless victims by offering food and medicine. The people are grateful for the assistance, and their praises begin to resonate with the actions of the Shinsengimi. Meanwhile, Katasu Akira assists Akira and confesses his feelings for her, proposing marriage. Akira shares her past, explaining her dedication to swordsmanship. During this time, Suzurin collects the paintings left behind by the masked men while also burying the deceased bodies. Sakuya brings food to Ichiban Boshi and they engage in a conversation about their respective pasts. Ichiban Boshi encourages Sakuya to focus on the number of lives they have saved rather than the missions they have accomplished. In the meantime, Tsukito informs the leader of the masked demons about the setback they experienced due to the fire, preventing them from gathering enough souls for their ritual. The leader manipulates Tsukito, urging him to kill his brother Ichiban Boshi, just as he had killed their mother, but instructs him to first eliminate Sakuma. The following morning, Katamori summons the Shinsengimi and delivers the news of Sakuma's death. He presents them with an Ukiyo-e painting depicting Sakuma's murder by the demons, along with a message indicating their next target, the destruction of foreign ships. 
Katamori commands the Shinsengumi to head to Sakai Port in Osaka to prevent the masked demons from carrying out their plan to blow up the foreign ships. Despite Kasaka Kanzui's suggestion to use Sakuma's death as an opportunity to expel the foreigners, Katsura advises against it, acknowledging the Choshu domain's lack of modern weapons and the need to focus on strengthening the nation instead. Mori Takachika, the lord of the Choshu domain, agrees with Katsura's perspective and dismisses the plan for a fight. In the meantime, the masked demons and Tsukido seize a ship and begin firing. The Shinsengimi, utilizing Tsukuma's electric screw ship invention, give chase. They defend against the bombs and board the enemy ship, engaging in a battle with the masked demons. Ichiban Boshi confronts Tsukido during the fight. However, the masked demons suddenly start jumping off the ship as it enters the Choshu area. The leader of the Choshu domain orders the ship to be targeted and fired upon with Type 0 cannons, which are powered by souls. The Shinsengimi realizes that the intention behind destroying the ship is to instigate war fervor among the people. Tsukido attempts to escape from the ship, but Ichiban Boshi pulls him back in. Ichiban Boshi tries to explain their parents' sacrifices and the reasons behind them, but Tsukido dismisses them, considering them weak. As the cannon fire hits the ship, Tsukido falls into the water and begins to drown. A rope becomes entangled around his leg, dragging him deeper. Ichiban Boshi cuts the ropes and rescues him from the water. Tsukido questions why Ichiban Boshi saved him and then goes to meet with the masked man. As Kyoto's residents witness the destructive power of Chasha's Type-0 weapons, they become inspired to fight against the government and foreign nations. Suzurin presents the drawings they collected from the masked men's corpses to Tadu, suggesting that they gather more drawings to reach a conclusion. Tsukido contemplates the words of Ichiban Boshi and decides to leave the masked leader's side, citing someone who believes in him. However, the leader uses his powers to capture Tsukido and bring him under his control. Katsura informs Akira that the Choshu domain is preparing for war against the Shinsengimi, with support from a member of the imperial court who has provided them with weapons and ammunition. Tadu shares the news of a traitor within the Azu domain with Katamori, who instructs him to keep it secret and orders him to guard the imperial palace while the Shinsengimi engage in battle. In the meantime, the Shinsengimi successfully gather all five types of drawings. Katsura reveals that Chasha's army plans to march from MT Tenno to Iwasha Mizuhakimangu Shrine, intending to create a star-shaped pattern reminiscent of the Anmyoto pentagram ritual. The Shinsengimi divide themselves into three groups and head toward different locations indicated on the map. Tadu, stationed at the Imperial Palace, receives a shock when he discovers that Tsuchimikado, the leader of the masked men who killed the original Shinsengimi members, is behind the attacks. The soldiers of the Choshu domain unleash a barrage of gunfire on the city, creating a star-shaped pattern, aiming to gather more souls for their rituals under Tsuchimikado's command. As the souls gathered from the pentagram ceremony form a beam, a monstrous entity emerges. This creature embodies the consciousness of Tsukido and calls himself Lord Haruakira. It is revealed that Tsukido had unwittingly been collecting spirits to sustain Haruakira's existence. Despite their attempts, Ichiban Boshi and Sakuya's attacks prove ineffective against Haruakira. Tsuchimikado informs Tadu that he has a receptacle of souls with superior qualities to draw upon whenever he requires Haruakira's power. Simultaneously, Simultaneously, the Choshu army reaches the imperial palace and demands the surrender of the emperor. Katsura attempts to intervene, but their leader disregards his pleas. Tsukuya entrusts his sand timer to Ichiban Boshi as his hand has been injured during the confrontation with Haruakira. Guided by the radiance of their swords, the rest of the Shinsengimi members gather in one location. They launch a collective assault on Haruakira, shattering his body into pieces. However, his body quickly regenerates, transforming into an Anmai Ochi. To stop the threat, Tsukido sacrifices himself by impaling his own body with a sword, thereby killing Haruakira. Upon Haruakira's demise, all the spirit weapons return to their normal state. 